Having now reviewed the Ryzen 7 9700X and being utterly disappointed with the results, it's time to see if somehow the Ryzen 5 9600 is any better. It's pretty hard to imagine this one's going to go a different way, but the 9700X situation was so bad that I'm going to let myself be delusional for a brief period, just so I can maybe feel excited about new PC hardware again. It's been a long time, guys. Given I can only be positive about a dumpster fire for so long, let's quickly go over the specifications and then we'll get into the benchmark data. The 9600X, like the 7600X, is a 6-core 12-thread processor. It can clock up to 5.4 GHz, which is 100 MHz higher than the 7600X, but it still has a 32 MB L3 cache. And really, the only major differences here will be seen at an architectural level. But today, we're not interested in architectural deep dives. The time for that has passed. We now want to know what the 9600X has to offer. AMD's priced it at $280 US, which is a 40% premium over the current asking price of the 7600X. So, based on that, it's hard to imagine this is going to work out well in terms of value. And at the current price, the 9600X could very easily be dead on arrival. So let's get into the benchmarks to find out. Actually, before we do, I'd just like to note a mistake in my 9700X review. The Cinebench 2024 Power Graph had the 9700X consuming roughly 20 watts more than it should. Now this doesn't change much, it certainly doesn't change our thoughts about the 9700X, but it's important to get this data right. So here is the correct data. Now. I will say it's been quite surprising to see how many AMD fans and even a lot of the reviewers gushing over the apparent power efficiency of the 9700X when compared to the 7700X. The problem with that though is the 7700X was never an efficient part to begin with. It ran well outside of Zen 4's efficiency window. And to address this, AMD released the Ryzen 7 7700, so the non-X version, which we much preferred as the performance was similar but power efficiency was much improved. So if you compare the 9700X with the 7700 non-X, so both the 65 watt parts, the 9700X is 7% faster while using the same level of power. So that's it guys, Zen 5 is about 7% more power efficient than Zen 4. It's an improvement for sure, but it's a fairly small one and it doesn't come anywhere near justifying the current price premium for Zen 5. And of course, the gaming performance is still extremely underwhelming. There's simply no getting around that fact. Here's a quick look at how the 9600X behaved in Cinebench. Under an all-core workload, it sustained a clock frequency of 5.1 GHz with a peak operating temperature of 67 degrees and then under a single core load hit the advertised 5.4 GHz. Now, running the Cinebench multi-core test, we see that the new 9600X is 7% faster than the 7600X, so not a massive uplift, but it is a lot better than the 2% we saw from the 9700X over the 7700X. The only other issue here being that much older parts such as the Core i5-12600K are still faster. Now, the big gain for Ryzen 5 processors can be seen when measuring single core performance in Cinebench. Here the 9600X is 10% faster than the 7600X, which is great. But sadly, as we found with the 9700X, this didn't seem to help with gaming performance. And of course, we will look at that in a moment. Before we do though, we'll take a quick look at total system consumption from the Cinebench multi-core test, and we see that the 9600X also reduced power usage by 7%. So it was 7% faster while using 7% less energy, and that's pretty good. But what isn't good is the 7-zip file manager performance. Here the 9600X is slightly slower than the 7600X, so going backwards seems less than ideal. And it's the same story when measuring the decompression performance. The 9600X is 4% slower than the 7600X, so again, that's not good. Performance in the Blender Open Data benchmark moves forward, which is a positive sign, though only by a 5% margin. The small performance uplift was only enough to just see the 9600X roughly match the 12600K. The Corona 10 benchmark results are really surprising because here the 9600X is 16% faster than the 7600X, and that's a big performance uplift, and it put the 9600X ahead of the 12600K, though it was still miles behind the 14600K. Still great gains here, and I hope we see more of it. 
Looking at the Photoshop results, we find a mild 6% uplift for the 9600X over the 7600X, which was enough to deliver one of the best results of any desktop processor. So a good result overall, but a pretty weak performance uplift when compared to the part it's meant to be replacing. The gains in Premiere Pro are even worse. Here the 9600X is offering just a 1% improvement over the 7600X, so you're getting basically the same performance, meaning there's really nothing to see here. And sadly, it looks like the 9600X has very little to offer over the 7600X when it comes to gaming. Just a 4% improvement is seen when testing with Baldur's Gate 3. Now in The Last of Us Part 1, we're actually seeing a 4% performance regression with the 9600X, dropping from 168 FPS produced by the 7600X to just 162 FPS. So that's very bad. The 9600X was also slower than the 7600X in our Cyberpunk 2077 test, trailing by a 2% margin. So another very poor result there. Also, as observed in The Last of Us Part 1, the 1% lows are much weaker than expected with the 9600X, down by a 7% margin when compared to the 7600X. Shockingly, the 9600X is also slower than the 7600X in Hogwarts Legacy, down 2 FPS here, which is a 2% reduction. So really bad gaming results so far. ACC was a good title for the 9700X, and the same is also true of the 9600X. The Zen 5 architecture works really well in this example, and here the 9600X was 19% faster than the 7600X, so a massive performance uplift. I just wish this was more of the norm and less of an extreme outlier. The 9600X was faster than the 7600X in Spider-Man Remastered, though only by a 3% margin, so not exactly anything to get excited about. And it's the same story in Homeworld 3. Here the 9600X is offering a mere 3% improvement over the 7600X. That's it. A Plague Tale Requiem shows the typical 3% uplift for us. This saw the 9600X throughput 149 FPS, whereas the 7600X was limited to 145 FPS. So yeah, another very small difference there. Now the 9700X was 10% faster than the 7700X in our Counter-Strike 2 benchmark. But despite that, the 9600X is just 2% faster than the 7600X. So I'm not sure why the 9600X isn't providing similar gains to the 9700X here, as I expected it would. So I guess more disappointing results. Speaking of disappointing, we have another game in Starfield where the 9600X is slightly slower than the 7600X. It's just a single frame slower, but obviously that is a disappointing result. Horizon Forbidden West provides us with another example where the 9600X manages to be slower than the 7600X, this time reducing performance by a 3% margin. And then we see we're looking at identical performance in Hitman 3 between the 9600X and 7600X, which is what we saw with the 8 core models. Then finally, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and here the 9600X is a mere 1% faster than the 7600X, so performance overall is basically identical. No improvement. Now here's a look at the 13 game average, and boy are these results depressing. The new Zen 5 9600X is, and wait for it, 1% faster than the 7600X across the 13 games we test with. This is an embarrassing result for AMD, and a highly depressing result for PC enthusiasts. I'm really not sure what else to say about this. Now power consumption while gaming isn't that impressive either. Sure, the 9600X was 4% faster than the 7600X in Baldur's Gate 3, but it also saw a 7% increase in total system consumption. Meanwhile, it was slower in Cyberpunk 2077, but still saw total system consumption increase by a few percent. And then we have The Last of Us Part 1, where the 9600X was 4% slower than the 7600X, and it only reduced the total system consumption by 2%. So, very disappointing results overall, and, well, that seems to be the theme of this review. Okay, so here's a look at the cost per frame for the relevant CPUs. And as you can see, the 7600X is the value king, costing just $1.37 per frame, making it nearly 30% better value than the 7700X. And that means it's also nearly 30% better value than the 9600X. So what I'm saying is the 9600X sucks at $280 US. It's really poor value, and you'd be worlds better off just getting the 7700X. End of story. 
And even if you factor in the platform costs, the 9600X is still terrible, coming in at an almost 20% premium over the 7600X, and more expensive than both the 7700X and 7800X 3D. It's crazy to think that for just $100 US more, you can get the 7800X 3D. So there you have it. The suck is strong with this one. In a nutshell, what makes the Ryzen 5 9600X a bad product is the fact that it's often slower than its predecessor and yet somehow costs 40% more. There is absolutely no reason why anyone should or would buy this product. It is a complete flop. For productivity, the Ryzen 7 7700X is much better and it costs about the same amount. And for gaming, the 7600X is basically the same thing. Or for $100 more, just get the 7800X 3D if you want the ultimate gaming experience. I didn't bother including PBO data in this video. With it enabled, the data was about the same. Sometimes I saw a 1-3% to improvement, but overall much the same. The PBO default setting is a complete non-event, just like the 9600X. In my opinion, Zen 5 is quickly shaping up to be a bit of a disaster for AMD. Initially, it seemed as though they thought they had a real winner on their hands, but it's now clear Zen 5 is anything but a winner. The architectural changes they made did very little for the most part, and while we did see some positive examples, we saw more where performance actually regressed. It seems clear now that AMD didn't evaluate the situation well enough. The only way to have any kind of success with Zen 5 would have been to increase core counts, meaning products like the 9600X should have started at 8 cores, and that really should have been the minimum. So at least Zen 5 would have had that over Zen 4. As many of you will know, I'm not one to focus on core count. I really don't have an issue with AMD selling a six core processor for $280 in 2024. But if they're gonna do so, they need to make it much faster than the model that came before. The 7600X, for example, look, it wasn't very good at the $300 MSRP, but at $200, it's a great product. Sadly though, the 9600X just couldn't build upon that success. The only way AMD could have made a six core CPU work in 2024 was to offer much more performance at a similar price. But that clearly isn't what has happened. Really though, even if they offered the 9700X at $280, I wouldn't have been that amazed given it's barely faster than the 7700X, which can be had for $290. But that would have at least been something. A bit of extra performance at a slight discount after two years, that is certainly not exciting, but at least we'd be moving forward. As it stands, the Ryzen 5 9600X, in my opinion, is a bad joke at $280 US. As I said, no one should be entertaining it at that price, and that being the case, there really isn't much more to say about the 9600X right now. This is the first time I have been truly disappointed with a new generation of Ryzen products, but I suppose AMD had a good run, I guess. If you liked the video, <clears throat> you know what to do. Thumbs up, subscribe, do all that stuff. And yeah, I, I not much more to say on this one. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.